In the previous part, I said that I would start with the windows in this video, but I changed my mind. As it's still remaining the doors for the first floor, I encourage you to draw them by yourself, but if you wish, you can follow my suggestion that I show to you in this plan. So, this is actually easy. Just follow the same process, and as some of the doors are exactly in the same place as in the floor below, just go to the shadow and make sure the distance to the wall is the same as the floor below, in my case 100 millimeters. Then keep inserting the doors for the other rooms. And finally, as there are some different walls, I need new doors and don't forget to flip when you think is necessary. Now yes, we can start talking about windows. First, we are going to load an Autodesk family in the same way as we did for the doors. Here I click in No Results and select Windows. Hmm, there are lots of them here and some actually beautiful. Ok, this time I recommend you to use this specific family, Windows DBL Swept Head. This time we are going to use exact measurements from the walls. And if you use a different family, probably the sizes won't be the same. I'm going to activate the command window, click on the family, which is this new one, 1360mm of width and 910 of height. Then I'm going to place the windows according to the example. Let's place the pointer on the wall at the side below and wait until this distance is 1100mm. Click. Then do the same for the window on the next room, but this time the distance at the left should be 500. There is a second window on the room, and again 500mm from the wall, and keep doing the same for all the others. In this situation, the window has to be in the middle, but you can see the distances to the sides show us 407.5 instead of 408. This happened because the dimensions are set to not display decimal cases. Moving on, you can insert the remaining windows by yourself. And when you finish, just press escape. An important tip, when you insert a window on the wall, there are two positions. Be aware that you place it correctly, as the window itself is usually closer to the outside of the building. If it's on the wrong side, just select the window and click on this arrow to flip it. Now, before creating the windows in the first floor, I want to talk about the visual styles and detail levels. Click in this button. This is the View Styles menu, and currently we have this option set to Hidden Lines. Here, the most basic style is the wireframe, where you can see all the edges from the solids. To notice better this difference, look when I change to wireframe in this 3D view. Then we have Shaded, Consistent Colors, or also the Realistic Styles. This one, you can notice even the materials when you have a closer look. Now, the more detailed is the view, the heavier it will be for the computer, so make sure your PC is powerful enough. On detail, we have three stages. Coarse, medium or fine. With coarse, the drawing is very simple, although it's enough for a lot of situations. However, if you like to have the things prettier, you can use medium or with fine. You can see here the door frames show now with more detail. Now, to add the windows to the first floor, I activate again the command and with the same window type, I'm going to place each window exactly in the same position as in the floor below. 
If you move slowly, you can easily find the moment where the window snaps. In the north side, all the windows are override with the ones on the ground floor. And then I need another one here. Then there are two places where I need a different type. I'm going to switch this to 910 per 910. Place the first one at 200 millimeters from the interior wall. And this one, even it's smaller. You can place it around there. And after, change the temporary dimension to the right one, which is 940. Ah, finally, there was another window remaining here, in this room, which will be a bathroom, and place it exactly in the middle, when both distances show the same value. Now, things start to be more challenging. At least, in my opinion, it's not very easy to learn how to draw stairs properly. So I will try to make it as simple as I can. Let's see. Ok, before adding the staircase to our house, let's make an exercise first. I'm going to draw some walls at the right side. And for that I'm going to click on this exterior wall, right button and go to create similar. And I am using exactly this wall type. I click here to start drawing. And let's make the interior measurements as 8 meters each wall. At the end press escape. Twice. Then let's activate the command stairs. It's this one. And now I want to introduce to you a new feature. The sketch mode. In this mode our drawing becomes temporarily locked. And we have to make our sketch with the tools that we can see here on components. When we finish, it's mandatory to click on the tick to confirm the stair or on the X if we want to cancel it instead. So that's the only way to leave the command. And you can press escape so many times that it won't work. So this is an important tip to remember. Now, by default, the first thing we will draw is the run and its shape is straight. I click to start the stair, it can be here, and now look at the options bar. The first parameter is the location line. It's placed now at the run center, but if I wish, I can change it to one of the run sides, or even at the exterior support. That's exactly the one I'm going to choose, the left exterior support. Ok, I move up to draw the stairs and if you look at the information, you can guess what is the desired number of rises to reach the next level. For the stair type, it is 17. And at this moment, I create 9 rises if I click right now. And there are 8 still remaining to reach the first floor. So click. And then I have to start the second set. Let's move up the pointer. You can see the extension track line, I'm going to start here, but as I want to create this run to the right, it doesn't work here. Press escape. Now I hold the pointer on the other corner, move it up and let this distance be more than 1 meter. Click. Move to the right and click again when you don't have any riser remaining. Finally, to confirm the stair and exit the command, we have to click in the green tick. Nice, it's done. Now let's have a look at how the stair looks like in a 3D view. It's this. As you can see, I started drawing from the ground floor and the top part is exactly at the first floor level. Let's go back to the ground floor and now I'm going to select the stair. And this may be a bit tricky to understand in the beginning. I'm going to move the pointer towards the inner side 
and as you can see everything highlights now. If I click and drag, I move the stair to another place. Press Ctrl Z to go back. On the other hand, if I place the pointer here, I am selecting only the railing. And by clicking and dragging, I just move the railing out of the stair. Also, if I click on the arrow, I'm only selecting the stair path, which indicates the direction to go up. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to move the stair to one of the corners of this room. First, make sure the symbol move appears. Then we can try to move the stair to that place. But you will notice it's hard to fit exactly on the corner. So in this kind of situations, the best is to use the Modify tools. Here in the Modify tab, I'm going to click on Move. Select the stair. Press Enter. Select this end point. And to move it to the corner, I have to click at the room's corner. Now we are going to learn some important tips to help us to edit and modify some of the stair components. When I select the stair, I can flip the stair direction if I click on this arrow. And then you can confirm it on the 3D view. Also you've noticed there is a notification that the railing is not continuous now. That's because there is a break at the landing, when it changes the direction. For now, we will not worry about that, it's just a small detail that can be fixed by increasing the landing. Then let's double click in the stair again to go back to the edit mode. Remember that this stair is composed in three parts, two runs and the landing. If I select this run, temporary dimensions show up in the screen to allow me to modify the sizes. I can change this dimension if I need a specific distance from where the stair starts to the wall. Or I could change this dimension at this side if I want just a specific length for this run instead. Remember that any modification I do, it's the run that moves because it's my selection. Finally, this dimension here is the actual run width that you can still check it out on the stair properties. Let's click here and change the run width to 1200 mm. The run stretch it to the right, keeping the left exterior support in the same place. If you remember, this was where I set the location line before. However, by changing the line to the run center and repeating again this step, You can see the run stretches to both sides equally. Let's go back again and now suppose I want to decrease this length to 900 millimeters. Look what happened. There is a warning. The actual run width is less than the minimum specified in the stair type. Basically, if we go to edit type, the first section is for the calculation rules. Maximum rise height minimum thread depth and maximum run width. If you are having troubles to understand what these parameters are, have a look at this picture here. So these are the values by default and we can edit them if we need. Then when one of the dimensions is out of this range, we get a warning from Revit, even it's not mandatory to respect the rule and we could place a stair with, for example, a really narrow run, like just 50 centimeters. OK, now I hit Ctrl Z to undo, and it's time to start making the stair on our project. OK, first, in order to have enough room, let's move the exterior door to the right of the main hall. After clicking on it, I'm going to change this distance to just 100. Then I also flip the door to the other side. OK, now let's insert a stair. 
I click on the button, make sure the location line is on the left exterior support, the actual run width is 1000mm and that the landing is set automatically. This time I will make the stair outside so I can move it to its right place after finishing it. I start here, move vertically up and I can use shift to avoid the stair bending to the sides and then when I have three rises remaining I click with the left button. Then let's move to the right to start a second rise and when I see the distance from top of the run to where my pointer is I'm going to type a value and let's say I want to start the next run at 1200 millimeters. Then I move to the right and as you can see I can create three rises more. Yes, three rises, because the landing also counts as a riser. Click on the tick to confirm the stair and the next step I need to move the stair to the interior of the house. Go to the modify tab, click on the command move which is this one, then select the stairs, ah, make sure everything is highlighted, press enter and click here for the start point. Then I want to move the stair to exactly this corner. Ok, next, suppose I decided to make this landing a bit narrower. That's easy. I can double click on the stair to go back to edit mode, then I'm not going to select the landing but this run here. What I can do is changing the total distance here to have 10 cm less. I'm going to type for it 4350, press enter and as you can see the thread depth didn't change, it was only the landing and I have a bit more space to the exterior wall. Likewise, if I change the value to a bigger one, I have a wider landing with the same thread depth. I press Ctrl Z, I am still with the 4350 and click on the tick to exit. So it was everything in this part of this tutorial, thank you very much for watching and don't forget, we will meet again on the continuation. So, see you, probably after 5 seconds.